Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Tayir, I'm a web developer and a UX designer and today we're going to look at my 20 favourite tips that will make your designs 20 times faster. Let's jump in. First and all-time favourite trick is keyboard shortcuts. Let me take you through the best ones. If we want to create a new square, we're just going to tap on R and then click in and we get 100 by 100 pixel square. If we want to do a circle, same thing. We click on O, click in. 100 by 100 pixel. If you want a new line or an arrow, click on L and then just drag it in. And then on the design panel, you can change it to be an arrow or whatever you need it to be. If we want a new frame, we click on F and then we get the presets on our design panel, but we can also just drag to create a new frame. Or if we click on F and click in, 100 by 100 pixel frame. If we want some new text, we're going to click on T and then if you watch my text session, you know this, we are not going to drag to create a text box. This is in PowerPoint. We're just going to click and then start typing. If we want to group a few items together, let's say I want to group the circle and the line, I'm just going to click on Command and G and now they are in a group. If I want to swap between my layers and my assets panel, I'm going to use Option and 2 and 1 to do that swap. And if I want to swap between Design and Prototype, I use Shift and E. If I want to select all of the children in this layer, you see I've got so many different layers here and everything's just like lots of layers down. What I can do is I can click on the parent and then click on Enter and that will take me one level down to the child and then the next child. And if I click on shift enter, I will go back up to the parent. So let's look at some duplication. I want you to look at the layers panel while I do this. If I select these two objects and I command C, command V, I'll get duplication and you can see it kept that pattern, UK, USA, UK, USA. And I have four of them. If I delete these, if I select these again and I command D, now it's going to duplicate them and it's going to do UK, UK, USA, USA. Now this might not seem like a lot, but if I had these in an auto layout, I'm going to shift A and then I'm going to select the children, enter. If I command C, command V, they're going to come in the underneath. I'm going to command Z to delete. If I command D, they're going to come next to each other. So just remember that. Another way of duplicating is to select the item, hold down option, you see I get that little double pointer, and then just drag the item to create a duplication. Another cool shortcut trick is the multiple image selector. If I click on command shift and K, I get this finder window and I can choose any images I want. They are loaded onto my pointer and then I can place them inside of different shapes as the background. Another cool tip is zooming inside of Figma. Now I can zoom in so many different ways. You can go like this on your trackpad. You can hold down command and use the wheel on your mouse. You can click on command minus and command plus. But if you want to see your entire file, you click on shift and one and it will show you everything that's in your design file. Or if I want to see a specific thing, I will click on that object and then shift and two and that will zoom to that selection. I can also double click on the layer I want to get to. Make sure you're double clicking on the symbol and on the name so I can double click on the symbol and it will just zoom me there. Another super useful is the keyboard shortcut for the color picker. If I select this heart and click on I, I can then just select a different color for it. Uh, another way of doing this is control C and control, even if you're on a Mac, use control uh, and I can just select something. Also really cool tip. If I have a stroke on here, if I click on I and choose something, it will just do the fill. If you want to do the stroke, just select the stroke here. So it's got that blue around it and then click on I or control C and then that will use the eyedropper or your stroke. If you use a lot of vectors in your designs, you may have encountered this problem, but if a vector is just a stroke or an outline and isn't actually a fill, when you change the size of it, even while holding down shift, the line will just shrink and it will become kind of really small and it will lose all of its shape. So what you can do in order to combat that is you can right click and outline stroke or shift command O and that will change it into a fill, meaning now that when I grow it, it kind of scales along with me. Another absolute favorite of mine is Figma's align tools, which just speed up everything. I'm going to click on this frame and then enter to select all of the children. If I hover over here, I get these four squares. If they're not there, they're also up here. I click on them and they just tie everything up so they put it into a grid. I can then control the space between the items over here or from the design panel so I can say 20 and 20. And now because it's not centered within the big frame, if I hold down shift, I'm going to be able to align them as a group to their parent. Another amazing trick with tidy up is you can see the pink circles here. If I want to swap the elephant and the bird, I just hold down the circle and swap places 
and that just makes everything so quick. Sometimes in my designs, I wanna see the distance between objects and their parents. So if you go into the inspect panel and then select an object and then hover outside of it, it will show you with red lines and numbers, the distance between the object and whatever you're hovering to. So if I hover to this, it will show the distance to that. If it's that, it's got four different distances to it. If you wanna also see your design as kind of an outline, you can click on command Y and you just see everything really neat. Sometimes in really complex designs, you just need this in order to get by. So I've made this little fake music app for us to show you the next 10 super fast tips inside of a real design situation. So first one, if you watch any of my videos, you know I'm absolutely in love with this, but batch renaming literally saves lives. So if I look at this gallery over here, I'm going to click on enter just to see all of the children. Everything is called like frame 2734. That means nothing. So if I select all of the different frames in here and then I'm just going to command R, I get this lovely panel up and then I can rename them. So for example, I I want to say music category but then I also want to give it a number for example so I say number up rename and then it's gonna put that number on them and then rename them batch rename is so 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 powerful for example if I don't want it to say music anymore I can put in mash music and then I can replace it with let's say an emoji control command space and then just put in and then the layout will be named emoji category and then a sequential number insane Next up is copying properties. So for example, you see I have all of these kind of song cards here and I wanna put this Grease album cover into here. So what I can do is I can command option C, which copies the properties and then go in here to my frame and say command option V and that will copy it over. If you've noticed though, I had rounded corners here and because this one didn't have them, I don't have it now. So what I can do, I'm just gonna command Z and I wanna copy the specific property, which is the fill. So I select this one, make sure that the, I selected that fill, kind of the blue around it, command option C, command option V, I only copied over that specific property. The next one, which is another absolute favorite of mine, is that anything you can write into in the design panel responds to basic arithmetic. So let's say I know I need to have three buttons down here, but I don't know what size they need to be. I'm just gonna click on R and drop in a square. Um, I know the size of my frame is 390, so I'm gonna make this 390. And then I know I have padding on either side of 15. So I'm gonna say minus 15, minus 15. I'm gonna center that. And now I know I need three items to fit in here and I want them to have a space of 15 between them as well. So I'm gonna say minus 15, minus 15 again, which will be the two kind of paddings in between the three items. And then I'm gonna say divide by three. And now I know that if I duplicate this, I hold down option and drag, hold down option and drag, select the three and just make sure there's 15 between them align them as a group to the center. I know that now, you can see this if I go into inspect, there's 15 here, 15 here, 15 here, 15 here, and they're the exact perfect size that I need them to be. Another super cool way that I love to use math is if I need something like a progress bar or a chart, and I need it to be the width divided by, let's say, four different steps. So I know that the width of my track is 105. So let's say I take this and I say 105 divided by four times one, and then this one is 105 divided by four times two, 105 divided by four times three, and then this one is just full width. And then I've got those steps for me ready to go. Next up is the scale tool. For example, I have these buttons here and I need them to come into here, but obviously this and this are definitely not the same size. I need their width to be 110. So if I try, these are frames with a vector inside. If I try and make this 110, sometimes the vector won't come with me. I can use constraints on the vector, but I can also just use the scale tool to scale everything down. I'm just gonna command Z, click on K, select this one, and then it's gonna either give me the option to scale it by a certain amount or I can just say the, the new width is 110 and that will just do that for me. I can also do this for multiple items at the same time. I can just kind of select them and then holding down shift, just kind of drag them down till I get them to where I need them to be. Next up is another absolute favorite of mine. If I need to replace these buttons with the squares, so they just go into where the squares are. I can select the item, command C or command X if I wanna just cut it and then click on where it needs to go, command shift R and it will paste to replace. I'm gonna Command X, Command Shift R, Command X and Command Shift R. 
Next up, sometimes I have this blob here and it's kind of providing this nice background, but let's say I want to move it down, a lot of times what's going to happen is it's going to jump out of my frame. So if I don't want that to happen, what I can do is while I'm dragging, after I start dragging, I hold down the space bar and then I can just keep dragging it out. Make sure though to let go of your mouse before you let go of the space bar, because if you let go of the space bar first, it will just jump out of the frame. Next little trick I wanna show you, let's say I wanna batch export all of these icons at the same time, because they're all vectors I wanna use. I can select all of them, click on export, and then just add as many export types as I want. Let's say I need to export it as normal, two times, three times, and as an SVG. And then I can Command Shift E, and that will give me this kind of export panel where I can see everything that I'm exporting, and I can just export and save them wherever I need them to go. Next up, if you've got limited screen space while you're presenting something or showing someone your designs, you can just command and full stop and that will hide all of the UI so you can just have a big old screen to show your designs on. Next up, I just want to talk about the power of frames. A lot of us come from different design tools where the norm was to create a shape and then create some text and, you know, that was your button and then you might have grouped these together please don't do that in Figma. Figma has frames which are super, super powerful. If I create a frame, drop it in, it can have a fill of its own, it can have an outline of its own, it can have the rounded corners, and inside of it, it can hold that bit of text um, that you can also, using the align tools, align it to the inside. Using constraints, if I put center, center, and also make sure that it grows from the center of the actual text box, it means that I've protected myself. So if the button becomes bigger, the label stays in the center. And also if the label changes size, like it becomes a really long sentence, it will still stay centered. So I can only be able to do that because I used a frame and not a stupid group. Don't use groups, they're just silly. If you're ever feeling lost in Figma and you don't remember where something is, where it be a plugin or a shortcut or anything like that, you just click on command and slash and you get this quick actions menu and you can look for anything. You can even look for like Conify, for example, you get this plugin and then I search for, let's say, a star and then I just drag a star into my design. On the quick action menu, command and slash, you, you can really search for anything. For example, show, you can do show rulers, show grid, show outline, show pixel preview. Anything you have on Figma will be in this quick action menu. Number 20 is a favorite of mine. It's an oldie but a goodie. It's prototyping environment. So I'm gonna go into my prototyping, shift and E, and you can see that I have a flow starting here. If I press on it, it will open the prototype. But as you can see, I'm gonna click on Z. It's gonna show me my app just kind of nice, but I want it to be inside of a phone screen. So if I go back into my design file and then just click on nothing, make sure you're selecting absolutely nothing, just clicking on the canvas, you can select a phone for it to be in. So I can say I want it to be blue and then my background color, I want it to actually be something from my file. So I could just use my eyedropper tool. And then when I go into here, now you can see it gets that brilliant color so you can use your branding and it's inside of an actual phone. Now that was our 20 design tips, but if you've stayed with me this long, you deserve a bonus. So I'm going to show you one of my absolute favorites, which is select all with same. Let's say that this font right here is just not working for me anymore. So what I can do is I can select it and then I'm going to use command and slash and say select all with same. Now you can see select all with same properties, same fill, same font, all of that, but I want with same font. If I zoom out, you can see it's going to select every single item in my design file that has that font and then I can change it. I don't want it to be in Nero Sans anymore. I want it to be in Nero Serif, Inspiration, into anything that you want. So you can select all with same, select all with same fill, with same font, with same properties, all of it. And it sometimes when you just need to change everything in a massive design file, it just helps you do it like that. And that is it. I hope now you can go and design much faster in Figma. Let me know if this video was helpful. Let me know your top tips. Share them in the comments below so we can all learn. I love to say that there's always something new to learn in Figma, always. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Let me know if you're enjoying my videos. See you at the next one.